Now that we know how to set up Tauri, let's build a timer. All you need to know is some basic knowledge of React and a tiny bit of interest. Yeah, this one still looks a bit simple. We'll work on the UI later on. Right now, let's focus on what's most important. Time. We want to create a simple timer that counts down from 30 minutes to zero by one second. Let's think about how we could do this in an imperative language. Maybe in a console application. We start with setting up a variable time, where we put in 30 minutes in seconds, so this will be 30 times 60. Then we have a simple loop. In each iteration of this loop, we wait for a second, then we subtract one from our time variable, and then we render the app. For example, in a Python console application, this would be just printing out the time variable. In JavaScript, we would use a set interval function instead. It takes a function and a delay, and then runs each time the delay passes. So first, after let's say 100 or 1000 milliseconds, whatever we decide, and then again, and then again, and then again. So first wait, then run, wait, then run. A function that is passed to some other piece of code is called a callback, because it's supposed to be called back. Most of the callbacks I've seen don't have a return value, and instead they modify some outside resource. Doing so is called a side effect. Our callback would be a function that decrements the time and then renders the app. We could also pass some additional arguments to the callback, but in our case it won't be necessary. Let's have a look at an actual Next.js or React code. It looks a bit different from our pseudocode before. Instead of just using variables, we have useState, which, as you probably already know, makes our code reactive. But in case you don't, here's a quick recap. We don't print the output or render the app manually. The app will render by itself. What we do is tell it when something has changed, and React magically optimizes everything. useState provides us with the variable time and a function called setTime. You might be tempted to just mutate the time variable when needed, but then how would React even know that something has changed? Unless we're using black magic. Stay tuned. This is why we have set time. It's what we call a setter, so a function that takes the value, checks if it changed, and if it did, updates the state and informs the app that something happened. This approach is called reactive programming and it's precisely why React is called React. If we mutated the time variable instead, the app wouldn't know if anything changed and therefore it would not re-render. We also have an is running state. While in this scenario it's not necessary, as we could just use our time state for everything, it will make the code easier to understand and more extensible. Let's have a look into the rest of the code. Most of it is just use effects. Use effects are our way of reactively running some code. Think of it as side effects that depend on the state of the app. However, be careful. Use effects are one of the trickiest things in React. To master them, we'll need to first learn what is idempotence. If a piece of code is idempotent, even if you mistakenly run it twice or more, it will still work just as if you would run it once. Think of a button being resistant to a broken mouse that double clicks all the time. You can see how the first use effect is obviously idempotent. Unless you really try to break it, it should set is running to false when time is equal to zero. Even if it somehow runs twice, is running couldn't be more false than false. In the dependency array, there's only time, which means that this use effect will rerun only when the time state changes. That feels like often, but once every second is not a lot for such a simple use effect. The second use effect is a bit more complicated than that. It runs very rarely, only when is running state changes. It sets up the interval, and here it's crucial to focus on why this does work. When you run setInterval, it sends the callback to a separate execution context, 
and returns an ID for the interval. This means that our use effect will finish running almost immediately, while the interval will keep going on and on and on and on. Wait a second, that is not idempotent. If we run use effect twice, we'll have two intervals. Luckily, we can ask React to remove old intervals when needed. If the callback we sent to use effect will return a cleanup callback, React will run it when the component is gone or if use effect reruns with new parameters. Oh, just don't mistake any of those callbacks with the callback we've sent to set interval or the callback inside this callback that we've sent to set time. That is a lot of callbacks. React runs on callbacks, and surprisingly, most of them don't have arguments like regular functions often do. The reason for that is in React, we want to control not only what code we run, but also when we run it. In set interval, we want the code to be repeated at a regular interval. In use effect, we want the code to run when the component is mounted or when the value in the dependency array change. In a cleanup to use effect, we want the code to run when the component is unmounted or before this use effect retriggers. You might also often see similar callbacks used for effects that happen in reaction to DOM events, like on click. Remember, a callback without arguments means we want to control when the code will run. What about the callback in set time? This one has arguments, and while callbacks with arguments might still be about when something happens, there might be other reasons for why we have them, and so it is in here. A use state setter can take a value or a callback. Here we choose the second one because it allows us to provide the same functionality without knowing what the value of time actually is. Why does it matter? Couldn't we just put in time minus one and call it a day? Well, because of use effects and use state's quirky natures, we'd be then left with two equally bad choices. We either provide time to the dependency array and have the effect rerun itself every second, or we don't and our linters will scream at us in agony. Okay, you might ask. What is the problem with all those scary alternatives? Let's say we omit time from the dependencies. React will only run the effect when is running changes. This seems exactly like what we want to achieve until you run the code and see it get stuck on 29 minutes, 59 seconds. See, a component is a function and even with all the weirdness of hooks, when you render a component, its function runs, does some things, and gets access to its locally scoped variables. Therefore, if state changes, but we don't include it in a dependency array of use effect, the old use effect will have access to the old value of time. As cleanup never happens, and use effect doesn't get rerun, the old set interval continues to subtract one second from 30 minutes, over and over again. What if we do add time to our use effects dependency array? Then it would rerun every second and keep creating new intervals. Cleanup would still happen, so no two intervals would run simultaneously, but it would completely remove any advantages of using set interval in the first place, as each interval would only run once. Also, use interval can be surprisingly precise if not abused, and we would lose all this precision that way. Yeah, we technically could still fix this with some hackery around early returns, but it feels really ad hoc. Using a callback allows us to completely avoid this problem, as it turns out we never needed to access the value of the time variable directly anyways. Let's quickly recap. Our first use effect will turn off the timer when it reaches zero. We could also manually pause and restart it by fiddling with the is running state. Try practicing this on your own. Our second use effect creates an interval that repeatedly subtracts one from our time state using a setter with a callback. 
that gets cleaned up afterwards. This use effect only runs when the timer gets stopped or restarted, not every second. The last part is a very simple formatting function. I bet none of us would want to guess how many minutes are in 1337 seconds every time they look at a timer. It's 22 minutes and 17 seconds. We'll talk about formatting in a future video, but for now here's a quick explanation of the code you see. To divide with a reminder in JavaScript, we have to separately divide and get a reminder. Regular division gets us a number with a fraction, so let's drop the fraction with math floor. We can get a reminder with a percentage symbol. In most programming languages, it has nothing to do with percents, it just gets us a reminder. Then a simple template string with padding for seconds and voila. We've done it. Thanks for staying till the end and I hope you've learned something. Share any questions you have in the comment section below and if you've enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe. I have an upcoming one about how those timer codes would look like in Svelte. Also, another one about making our timer more resistant to some quirks of set interval. I can't wait to make more TypeScript, Tauri and Rust content as well. Too much stuff to learn, not enough time. Also join the Discord and share what you're learning or trying to build. Hopefully we can all help each other out.